Oh, yeah, I know, D. It's okay if you go to this live stream. But not only am I doing a live stream, um, Jacob's currently doing a live stream, Caleb's doing a live stream. It was just one of those. <laughs> so here we are, because I posted it on my um, community page. So it might just be a few of us. But anyway, I have an unboxing. <laughs> I don't. Hey, Lisa. Um, boohoo. Yeah, lots of videos. So I really don't know what's in here. I think I know what's in here, but I don't know what's in here. So we're gonna open this. Yeah, I know. If it's, it's okay, Maria. If y'all want to go to Jacob's live, it's totally cool. Um, I don't. And not only that, in like a few minutes, Caleb's going live. So it's just one of them days. Go ahead. Live through Thursday. Yeah, right. <laughs> but Craig said, Jackie, they can watch your live, catch Caleb's live, and still, still think it will probably be streaming. <laughs> Depends on how he feels, right? So. <sighs> but, so let's see. I'm hoping this is the perfume I ordered, but I don't know because it doesn't really say on the label. Yes, it is. Totally, guys. I bought. Remember, I told you about the brand new um, Ralph Lauren. Um, look, isn't that pretty? Is it the first time I've ever ordered, bought something directly from the website? <laughs> he's streaming. Oh yeah, he he hasn't even he's just he hasn't even done his first video yet. I was listening to him. Hey, Keith. Hey, look, I have my box. I have a Ralph Lauren box. We're just going live today because, well, my day sucked. <laughs> yeah, I've never had Ralph Lauren packaging before. This is really impressive. And this is from their fragrance side of the house, right? So it's not the same as the, you know, clothing side of the house. But so let me show you what I ordered. Um, so these are teeny tiny little 15 milliliter um trial discovery set they call them um oh maria it was just training i'll, I'll explain in a minute so this is the polo blue and the polo red so i wanted to try them but didn't want to didn't want to invest too heavily because i tend to do that i tend to buy the largest size anything and then i'm like oh but then you're kind of stuck and, and men's cologne comes in five to six ounces like oh so here's what I, the other thing I ordered, I got, okay, so I got two samples. So this is the Polo Earth sample, and this is the Oud, Polo Oud, because I really like Oud. James doesn't like Polo Oud, so um, he doesn't like Oud. Polo Blue is classic. I don't know, I've never smelled it before. Hey, they threw in another sample, this Polo 67, which is what I purchased, um, so normally I would have just purchased the largest container they had because value, right? And that's like five ounces, but this is the 2.5 ounces. Um, they were having, and they're still having a 20% off, 20 to 30% off their, um, fragrances or just their website i don't know it's like friends of family sale or something um maria says i had a tough day too so happy to be with my youtube and then when i bought oh wait a minute there's something missing in my order maybe it will come separately i hope or maybe they ran out so it was supposed to come with a tote bag and a candle guys um so it's supposed to um Yeah, it didn't come in this order, so maybe it's coming in another order? I don't know why they would send something 
maybe it's only while supplies lasted. So I didn't get the, um, it's supposed to come with a tote bag and a candle, which is why I wanted to buy it at this time, because not only was I buying it on sale, but it came with a free candle. And this is the Polo Earth. It's supposed to come with a, come on, light, cooperate. You can open it. Um, oh, wow, that smells great. Oh, wow. I haven't, I don't have Polo Earth. It's something I've been wanting to get. Come on, stop being so, let me turn off this light. Let me see if that helps. Nah, still, it's just white. Okay. Just trust me. It has a Polo Pony and it says um, Polo Earth on it. It's really pretty. It smells great. Hey, Steph. Hey, Miss Jelly. Um, hey, Mac Mac. Um, so yeah, I wanted to get this and hopefully they'll send the, they'll send the tote bag, but maybe they ran out. So it's supposed to, so I got the discovery set for $30. The, this was $92 and this is 20% off the regular price. This stuff ain't cheap. Um, but honestly for, for 2.5 ounces or 75 milliliters, it's not that bad because, um, where is it? Like this one is a hundred milliliters, so three point three ounces, and cost per wear. I mean, and this is the oh, I got the toilet. I did all the things wrong. I could have sworn I picked the Edu perf the perfume instead of the toilet water. Oh well, I hit all the wrong thing. No, okay, wait, no, mm, yeah, I did the EDT. I did the EDT. I was going to go for the, maybe this didn't come in the EDT or EDP. Anyway, let's open it up and see how it smells. So this is their brand new polo scent. It's called Polo 67. Um, and I was super excited to try it because I've been wearing polo until, sir, James. Oh, no, no, sir. Thank you. I really appreciate all the effort. My husband just changed the intake filter. And it is completely covered. I mean, like, I'm surprised air to pass through that filter. And he's like, well, you can just change it. I'm like, no, no, no. I said, thank you. Thank you so much for getting on the ladder. Um, never smelled those. What are the notes? I actually don't know. I, I know bergamot. Bergamot tends to be a classic men's. I'll have to look it up and read it. Oh, actually, I'll have to look it up on my computer. Um I read the notes when I saw it, but, uh, so I, I'm a huge fan of men's colognes in general. Um, I like men's fragrances in general. Um, I like the packaging. I like the colors. Ooh, I love that. Opening. It has... And, you know, it says Polo 67, so it does smell like, I mean, it has the Polo smell. A little less woody, more citrus. You can really smell the, and when I say citrus, I mean like bergamot, not, not like, um, not lemon, but bergamot, which is classic in, in, in men's perfumes. Bergamot is really, this is one of the things, it's woody. This is great. I yeah, love it. Here. Well, yeah, because I just sprayed like two sprays and it's brand new. I just, James, like, I can smell it over there at the other side of the room. Like, yes, yes, you can. This is, um, let me move some stuff out of the way. Where am I going to put this? Okay, let me put this over here. Um, yeah, I love bergamot. It's why, um, I like this. I'm, I'm very happy with this. This is not as, um, not as distinct as polo green. But so it's not as spicy. That's the difference, I think, for me. It's not as spicy. Um, but I really wanted to get try this um, this set, and for thirty dollars, I thought that was a good um, good purchase because it's fifteen milliliters isn't that much. Fifteen milliliters is like uh, a few wears, but it's better than those teeny tiny little samples. And because this is a paid for sample, so it's like point. It's half an ounce, guys, but it'll give me just enough to see which one do I really want to buy because um, most blue fragrances are aquatic in nature. They always call them aquatic, and then in this red one, I don't, I don't know. Um, this one might be. I think current is in this one, if I can remember. I read all the notes, but I can't remember all the details. 
when I bought them. But I really am very impressed with this candle. I like this. I will if this is what the perfume smells like or the cologne smells like, and I have it a sample, um, which is why I got the sample. I will definitely be buying that. So I had heard that the Polo Earth was a little bit more. Let's see. It might actually say on here what the notes are. This one doesn't. But I did go pull out a lot of my fragrances, guys, because I needed the drawer space. So traditionally, all of my, oh, by the way, I got Easter bunnies for my mother-in-law. And and I got an Easter card. So James would go see his mom. And that's where we were. That's why it took me a little longer to start. The, for Earth Candle, I think it's citrus and lavender and sage. And I got, isn't that pretty? His mom ordered that for me. Or us, I should say us. Easter is her favorite holiday of the entire year. Of It's her favorite day of the entire year. It's her favorite service. It's her favorite more than Christmas, more than New Year's, more than birthday, more than anything. She loves Easter. Easter has always been her um, holiday. So we're going to be out of town. So his brother is going to go hang out with mom. And um, we're going to go to Houston tomorrow. So I wanted to make sure I could at least go live. Um, so my whole per fragrance order for everything you saw was 132 And the shipping was free because it was a promotional thing. Um, so let me see if I can look up the fragrance notes. I'm going to text or type so you'll help hear typing um let's go to the fragrantica.com where everybody goes to find anything about fragrances and let's go for polo let's see if 67 even is even on there oh i put the wrong number in six seven Okay, so it says that the polo rough word for men. Let me un. I scaled it. And it's too scaled. Wait, wrong number. Wrong. All the wrong words today. So this is an aromatic, citrus woody, earthy, fruity, fresh, spicy, patchouli, sweet, fresh, and herbal. So like every word you could ever imagine. Yeah, they put them all in one. Let me see if I can minimize this a little bit so I can see the chats too. So it's right now it's covering the chats, which is not cool. Um, let me move this over. Craig says, hey, Brian. Uh, Birkin. Uh, Keith says, Craig, do you have a bag in... I have no idea what that is slouchy um okay they're talking something hermes i'm sure so let me read the rest of this um so it says that the polo 67 is a woody aromatic i don't really get the wood so it's a brand new launch this year brand brand new so bergamot is the top note lemon lemon pineapple you get that oh now that it's calmed down a bit, yeah, I get the patchouli. I love patchouli. This is this is definitely a me. This this is where you get the polo, the real polo for me. Um, middle notes are sage, juniper, rose, hip. Base notes are vetiver, patchouli, and goldenrod. So now, for me, the opening notes that's the bergamot and pineapple, right? And then um, for me, it dries down right into that patchouli. I love patchouli. That's the spice. That's the spice. That's the spice that I love in Polo. Um, Caleb's up. I've had to. I have to go. Yeah, bye, D. Don't worry. See you around. Um, so let me look at the Polo. What Polo? The one I wear every day is Polo Intense. Well, not every day, but pretty often. Um, Polo Cologne Intense. So that one is a Fougere fragrance. So the one I was wearing, basil, mint, grapefruit, celery, sage, violet, leaf, thyme, vetiver, and patchouli. So they both had that vetiver, patchouli in the polo, the polo DNA, a polo. Um, so, hey, Monica. Um, so I got, so that's the one I wear. I, I, the one I wear... I have been wearing the most is is this one right here. 
And now this is the, I don't know, five ounces or something. And this is the, you know, 75 milliliter. But they sell refillable, um, rechargeable um, refills. I think this might be a refillable. This might not be refillable. I don't know. I don't know the science behind. Oh, hey, maybe that was not. But anyway, some of them are refillable. Some of them are not. Um, so the other one, the Polo Earth, let me find out what that one smells like. Polo Earth. So Polo Earth is a really pretty packaging. It's a really different look. And it is a citrus aromatic. Yeah, I definitely get the citrus in that one a lot. So this one has, so the candle, or I should just point out the little sample card. Um, yeah, this sample I got is Neroli, Pettigrain, Citron, Bergamot, Peppermint, Green Mandarin, Middle Notes are Orange Blossom, Geranium, Yang Yang, Sage, Lavender, Rose, Vetiver, Cedar, and Musk. So this is interesting. This one doesn't have any patchouli, that, that, so it's not as spicy. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited about trying these. I really, I really am. I love fragrances. But but let me shift to my... To my um, oh, wait. What did I miss? That thrift store I sent you a pic for yesterday had a bag for 800 but that bag is literally a puddle of leather. Ooh, um, $800. That, is that a good price? I don't know. Um, so I took out my fragrances from where I normally keep them. This entire tote. This entire tote. Okay, guys. Ugh, it's full. The entire tote. I told you I started collecting fragrances before I collected, uh, well, I've always collected all of it, but the amount of fragrances I was buying when I first got into YouTube, James, this is the only thing James has ever asked me to stop buying. Um, because <laughs> well, there's that. Um, this entire tote, um, and so, um, this is, like, this is Jessica Parker, which is okay, this is Reeve Gauche by YSL, one of my favorites in here, this is another, this is a Mon Gorlon, the original, the one I would wear the most is a, is a off a flanker. This is one of my favorite men's colognes that I wear the most. Dolce and Gambata, the one. I love this one. Um, and it's not so bad until you think of the average bottle of perfume is between fifty and a hundred dollars on sale. And I have two giant totes of them. And uh, yeah, so so James, so James is like no more, no more, like. This one is a is a this is like a seventy five dollar seventy five dollars. Then it's even more now seventies uh, Shepra. So I love perfume, but what I'm wearing is actually Polo, pretty much. Um, get a Kelly without a handle or a hole. Bye bye bye. Perfumes can be a black hole. You can get addicted. Yes, yes, and I really like um fragrances that are heavy in patchouli fragrance scents myrrh oud all of the eastern scents i'm all over the um orientals you know fragrances but that's because i grew up going to church or going to temples so you see i told you it was right there so we'll have to save it for a different birthday um we had to buy a second birthday card for my nephew i'm going to show you the bag i'm using today i'm just moving my um badge so what i did show you guys in a live unboxing um because well it came yesterday 
I love oud, but oud is definitely polarizing, guys, and so is patchouli. Like I think uh, polo does patchouli the best it can be done, um, in a way that isn't. It's a base note, right? So look at how beautiful this bag is. This bag is gorgeous, gorgeous. Yes, it's a reed bag. Um, look at the look at how it. I I love the this back. This is the back, and I love it. Look at this. Now this has a story. This is a story. Um, Craig says, "Hey Jackie, have you ever seen um, the? This is called the RK40, and I wasn't originally going to share it with you guys because I was gatekeeping this one. But truth of the matter is, I probably will never find this again." So I am okay with sharing it because I will probably never find another one. Um, this bag is amazing. It's a soft leather. The only flaw in this bag, honestly, is that because it's edge painted at the top, it's cracking a little bit, which is completely normal. This is a very flexible, soft, but structured, and it has um, the underside is the suede, the backside of the leather. This bag is gorgeous um it comes with a stupid strap and the reason i got it so cheaply is the strap leather was splitting and they showed that in the listing right but guys they listed this bag for twenty dollars you heard me right i will never find this bag again i will never find this bag for this price even with tax and shipping it was 37 dollars, 38 rounding up i will never find this deal ever again i know that i i'm accepting it as a gift is a gift from ebay thrifting all the times i've been scammed <laughs> i know keith i know <laughs> it all i can say is that when people look if they take the time to look for reed karkoff because people list them wrong all the time what you're gonna see is cole's read collabs so whoever owned this didn't know didn't care whatever and um or they thrifted it or gifted got it gifted or something um yes yeah. i got a three thousand dollar bag for 38 dollars. i will never find this deal again I know this. I accept it. I am just going to love this one. This is my again version of the Birkin, and um, this is gorgeous. This is absolutely. It, it did. It did have um, transfer. It had a really bad transfer spot. I cleaned this. Um, I used saddle soap last night and cleaned this whole thing. It wasn't as pristine, um, but it wasn't bad, guys. It, it was an easy clean, easy fix, no problems. But I said, it's cracking uh, cracking up here, and it had a transfer on the white side, on the white, and I cleaned it up. Um, yeah, they, that's, that's the thing, Craig, is like sometimes you'll see the faux leather version for 300, and then some, and this is the leather version, which should be 3,000 new or even a couple hundred used for 20 because people don't look at the reed. Again, reed has to have Karkoff, or it's not a reed Karkoff, it's just a reed bag, you know. So, but I have another bag. It came in yesterday also. So these are the last bags I have coming in other than a couple things that came that were pre-sent before Ban Island. So I banned. I've been one week, one week without shopping for a bag. Well, hey, one week without buying a bag. We still are shopping. I saw a bag today for $500. And if I had $500, I would have bought it. It was the most gorgeous, most glorious, most beautiful um, Ralph Lauren denim tote i had ever seen i'm like i'm like no jackie no and then honestly i could probably make it myself but not as good as that one um <laughs> i know right keith that's what i was telling you like 40 bucks is lunch buy the bag <laughs> but the other bag that came in now this makes me laugh I bought this for my mother. My mother will never see it because it's too big for my mother. I didn't realize I bought the large boxer bag. I thought I was getting the medium boxer bag because apparently I don't read dimensions. And the photos on the real reel are horrible. And I laughed when I unboxed this because this I bought this specifically for my mom. This is too big for my mother. She will not wear this. So I'm like, I don't care. Even if she wanted it, I'm keeping it. 
I didn't realize. I didn't look. Um, um, no, no, this this is something I bought um before Ban Island, guys. This is this was coming in the mail. There's a little bit of discoloration here on the bottom. Um, I did clean this whole thing last night with saddle soap again. Um and you get around Ban Island without leaving Ban Island. <laughs> um, Jackie, y'all know I love the Coach Burrow bags, but I got a mini today and it is the cutest little baby version. I think that's awesome, Craig. I love that. Um Hello, the Heady Channel. Nice to see you. Welcome in. Welcome in. So this is a bag um, I purchased prior to Ban Island, guys. This came, it took a while to get here. It really did. My mother loves yellow. My mother loves yellow. So I bought this for my mom because my mom saw this, uh, this bag and she wanted it. So she might actually get this one now. This is a, uh, this is a JW Hume. I think it's JW Hume. Um, it is a bag no longer being made. Yeah, JW Hume Co. And mom saw this and she loved it, right? But now, and so I didn't, I try not to buy. Okay, there's certain things in my life I try not to buy. Yellow bags, because I love them, but so does my mom. And then um, green bags, because my sister loves them. So they take them. You know, and uh, <laughs> so it is. So I try not to have them. Every time I show a photo of a yellow bag on my on my channel, my mom's like, "Oh, I love that bag, Jackie." Which in 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 Asian mom language means give that to me. And most of the time, that works. It does. It works. I just give it to her. Uh, and my sister, who I did not intend to give her my four hundred dollar green gorgeous bag from um, Teddy Blake. Fell in love with it. So I said, Jennifer, I will give you this Teddy Blake bag if you give me back my Red Mitchell bag that you have never used. And she said, okay. She finds her Red Mitchell bag. Jackie, I love this bag. Can I keep it? I'm like, Jennifer, I gave that bag to you two years ago for Christmas, and you have never used it. Now you found it. Now you used it. So give me back the green bag. Oh, but I love that one, too. I'm like, okay, fine, Jennifer. You have to give me a bag back. You can't keep them both. Those are very expensive bags. And she's like, well, I'll give you my Vera Bradley leather bag that you love. I'm like, yes. Yes, please. And can I have that Ralph Lauren you've never used? And she's like, yeah, sure. And I've reminded her and reminded her and reminded her. She can't. She's conveniently not able to find them. I'm going to have to go into her house someday and just go find the bag and say, Jennifer, the Mitchell bag or the Teddy Blake bag, one of those bags is coming home with me. <laughs> um, well, now Jen will have to fight me for that green. I know. So that's what we'll see, Craig. That's also why I'm giving you the green bag. Just because I know if she sees them, she takes them. So when I do pick up one or two, I'm like, Craig would like this one. <laughs> so it's like, she goes. It's green bag because I love green bags. Green is one of James's favorite colors, so he would like me to have green bags too. But every every single time I have a green bag, my sister's like, "Oh, that's such a pretty bag," like or purple. I can't have purple. I can't have green, and I can't have yellow. I now have quite a few yellow. We'll see what happens. Um, pick one or the other. I know. I know, right? Jen's like, but she does this. I'm a twin. I was told my whole life, share with your sister. She's your younger sister. Five minutes, people. Five minutes. But I've been told my whole life, share with your sister. I'm like, hmm, whatever. I'm, I'm trying so hard to teach Jackie. Just, yes, he does have to remind me on a very constant basis. Um, he goes, it's okay to say no, and you should just say no. Did not only say no, he says, when someone says they like something, give them the link to find it. Don't give them yours. And I'm like, why have I never done that before? I should have just do that. Because I'm just like, I, I, if I show them the link of here's where you can buy it, and they don't buy it, then that means they really didn't love mine, right? <laughs> so, so those two bags came in, and I, I did something else, too. Um. I cleaned this bag. Now, this is the bag that Winnie B. LV 
did a competition with Ed Braun, and it was to repair a bag, right, and restore a bag. Well, what she did was, this was originally New Buck. Well, what happens when you take New Buck and you put shoe polish, or I think it was butter... Leather butter, it's called leather butter, but she took the, she totally changed the new buck into a smooth leather because it's so finished at this point. There's no way, no way this will ever become new buck again. Um, but I did take some, uh, but the way it's colored, it didn't go so even on the front. It was really even on the back. So I took some saddle soap. <laughs> well, because new buck. Because New Buck, she, she, okay, so New Buck had to be cleaned in a certain way and with a certain solution. And she probably still could have dyed the New Buck and kept the nap. But because of the, it kind of looked dingy. But man, she did not like this bag. She, I've never, I did not realize she was so sensitive to like pre loved bags because she had like a mask on she put that like in the odor chamber she i mean this this poor bag went through the washing machine um but i love this bag i really love this bag so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use i have a apache um it's called apache by bickmore um conditioner and it's for distressed leather so i'm gonna see if i can add a little and it should color it should darken it just a tad bit more and we'll see how that looks we'll see how that looks but it can't hurt it it can't hurt it. It's been through the washing machine. Girl, I mean, this thing has been scrubbed. It's been in a sink. It had a dunk. She still didn't like it. She threw it in the washing machine. Then she dried it. And then she put shoe cream on over it. I mean, this bag has been through the ringer. And it's still kicking. And I've carried it. She's a good bag. I love the way the turn lock um, function is right here. And it has all this cool little... Um, detailing this is an awesome little bag so it's but the, the but bothers me though is how this is a little bit darker here than up here so we're just gonna see how it goes and if not we'll try it she had zero of, oh yeah she didn't want to keep this bag i think she wanted to kill she wanted to burn this bag man she said it to me she, uh, she for free she didn't even ask she, I, she said jackie i want out of my house you don't have to pay for shipping i said thank you because i love this bag i found this bag for her it's like ten dollars on ebay but after shipping and taxes it was like 40 bucks or whatever yeah she wanted to burn this i mean she 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 did not she she was in like gloves she hated this bag <laughs> she was like also she didn't win i think she should have won i do because what ed braun did to the bag that he did was he paint he redyed it and he painted a whole scene on it i'm like you can't compete with that <laughs> hey bry uh so anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna see if i can pull up my um apache cleaner now and i'll do it with you um let me move some stuff. Oh, so this is my vintage Reedy from Luxational. She gifted that to me as a gift, as a surprise gift. She didn't even tell me. this these are all my cleaning supplies this is what i have to clean all of my um everything all my leather supplies cleaning supplies everything all the paints everything i use um yeah i know it's a natural aging of leather but then she also put shoe polish on it <laughs> I might have trauma from this, okay? Ah, this one. I want to, I just want to see what it does. Let's see together. If it doesn't, you know, it might not do anything. I might just condition it some more because I did clean it last night. <laughs> So this is the Apache cream, and this is from Bickmore, and this is for Will Darken Leather. So I'm just going to throw it on there, and let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah, I am. I, I mean, Caleb does it too. He puts, um, well, I probably should have done that first. 
he put um shoe shoe polish a kiwi shoe polish on his um doonies and i just about oh <laughs> I can read that. I'm not going to say it out loud. So this is just a liquid. Um, this makes us a lot more funny, guys. <laughs> reading Craig, reading your... Yeah, totally. Guys, this is it's a leather conditioner on a bag that cost $10. Winnie put this bag through the washing machine. Leather conditioner is going to do nothing to it other than moisturize <laughs> it might darken it but so what it has character you know i'm just gonna i mean if this is like a four thousand dollar you know bag would i be so careless probably not you know but it's you know it's not a four thousand dollar bag it's it's a, like a 15 year old bag what about that bag you did that to? Yeah, that was my fault. That I probably shouldn't have done that way. And I knew it too. When I, and you're like, oh no. Yeah, I'm okay with the, I'm going to, I'm going to still fix that one. It's, you have to learn, right? And you can only learn by doing. And what I, and I knew, I knew I should have evenly distributed that better. And I didn't. And it was definitely my fault. I actually even used a, um, wax face polish on a crazy horse leather you're not supposed to do that and um i did and what i learned was you're not supposed to do that <laughs> after i did it <laughs> um it's okay though guys it's just see the thing is they're my bags and for me it's also like i i, I think perfection's overrated it's my i like character i mean that bag's also what but from not what what was the years Craig from nineteen no two thousand fourteen to two thousand eighteen or something? Oh yeah, I'm all in. I am all in when it comes to trying out something. It's like I will try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, I'll try something else. It's just leather. It's not gold. Actually, gold's probably more forgiving, to be honest. This is actually soaking in more than I thought it would, because this has already been... Um, so, Winnie B uses Bickmore Leather Conditioner 4, 2005 to 2018. So, even at its newest, that bag's five years old, you know? It probably isn't five years old, probably older. That Atlantic, Atlantic tote. Yeah, it's dripping. Yeah. It's actually looking really good. I am actually surprised at how much this is absorbed into. Very. Yeah, this is really, this is a, this is meant to restore um rough leather not rough leather but well yeah rough leather this is like and this poor bag man i still can't believe when it threw it through the dang washing machine honest to goodness i mean i put a bag through the washing machine but it was a ten dollar bag again this is also a ten dollar bag um just because i had nothing else to lose and i'm pretty sure that's how she felt about this one do you buy that? Oh, yeah. This one? This uh, Apache cream? Yeah. I buy all of my leather stuff. And I, you know how I found out about what leather stuff to buy? I I watched Beto's leather work. Um, and I watched him and I watched a bunch of other leather. Because, you know, I started YouTube with, other than perfume, it was how to clean vintage Louis Vuitton. You know? So... I think that's enough. I'm just gonna this has a little wrinkle in it. Um but I like learning on, on bags like this that have no investment emotionally. And it's weird, there's a little bit of a pen mark right there. Um why did she oh she washed it in the washing machine because okay, so Winnie um is very 
smell sensitive and this was this was originally nubuck it was not this this brown color this she made it this um chestnut color this was actually more of a topi suede when she originally got it and she didn't and it was it was who can restore a vintage thrifted bag underneath forty dollars tax and shipping completely and win so it was her ed and i think yota was yota in that one i think it was yota i can't remember but um but it came with an odor and it was really um on the inside the lining was really bad so she she even though she hand cleaned it and scrubbed it the first time around she hated uh she didn't like it so she didn't like the way it smelled and so she just threw it in the washing machine and you know she was like i don't like the way it, she's very very odor sensitive so if you ever want to learn how to get something out of a bag odor wise she has like a whole system like a serious system it's like winnie b like she doesn't like smoke she doesn't like st stale smell like odor um storage smell you know when it's stuck in a um musty airless space um how leather can get that smell on oh, autumn um i thought it was a rough bag i was rough with bags but i guess winnie winnie had winnie had no fear oh it was david from david's closet thank you craig i don't know if you caught um autumn's new video today i did real quick i sometimes breeze through her videos because well sometimes i just breeze through her videos and today was the bags that she's banned like she's like i love them but i never used them so i can't buy them anymore i have those bags too i have bags that i love like i love and i and, and i buy them knowing jackie you know you're not going to use this bag why are you doing this so anyway i'm gonna let that chill it is pretty much soaked in guys and i'm surprised at how well this kind of just went in um it's okay dd bean did hers too and it's funny because dd and her collabed and the funny part for me is the bag that dd showed was actually a bag i gave her and it was actually an expensive bag the hobo it was a hobo international bag and the reason i gave it to her is because she'd seen me with it and she's oh that's so beautiful it's a beautiful bag um but the strap the way the strap it doesn't my shoulders slope and it will not stay on my shoulders and um so and i said you can try it out you need to try it out it's a beautiful bag and um and yes i spent a lot of money for it but see dd is very emotional about her bags too so she i just told her cut the strap off you know if the bag isn't working just cut the strap off and put a different strap on it you know what's the point of keeping it if you're not going to use it you know modify it i'm all about modifying stuff if it don't work you know there we go i'm gonna let that dry because it's still a little damp and i'm gonna leave it alone because i'll keep messing with it and messing with it and messing with it <laughs> like i really want to put um conditioner on the this polo but i'm a little leery of using that particular conditioner so i'm gonna grab a different one um Oh, all the way at the bottom, of course. Mink oil. I do that with my Kelly. I always buy either a longer strap Hermes or aftermarket. Oh, yeah, because I mean, like, look, if the if people are like don't change the bag you ruin the design of the bag look my bag look, it's like i don't care what the design is if i can't use it the way it came i'm not gonna pay them to extend the dang chain i know that amelia rose has paid um to have um her chanel this is this is just a mink oil so it has um it's like part mink part beeswax and part lanolin and um it has a 
that's why I sold all my consciousness because trust. Yeah, it was too short. It's like no, and you can't you can't extend those. And it's not, it's not like you're going to cut those, right? So this is the applicator, and the sponge applicator I find to be really useful. So here we go. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Don't panic. Don't panic. I'm not a professional, but don't panic. It's just a bag. It is just a bag. So we will start with a base and just to take a look. You know. But it's a leather bag. And a leather bag needs moisturizer. It is a natural product. It does dry out. And most people don't even store their bags correctly, let alone ever put conditioner on them. So one of the things I do when I get a bag is I condition it. I like to use it first just to see how it feels. You can turn, you get used to the feeling and then you kind of know, you know. So this is my favorite tote. Um, this will probably be my favorite tote forever. I really don't see how I could not love this tote. This makes me love this particular style tote more than my other totes. And I have a lot of totes. There's just something about the way this is this i have to be honest this detail with the covered buttons oh my gosh i love it <clears throat> that's why i sold him okay. oh my god i can't breathe that leather <laughs> yeah soaked up the liquid yeah yep Yeah, one of these days, I would like to just touch, I would like to get some old Hermes or something. The only Hermes bag I had was the Air, Air, Amazonia Garden Party. So the leather bits that were actually leather was Buffalo. And then the rest of it was that horrible coating, um, the rubberized coating that sucked. Um, but I would like to see what their other, everybody says stuff about their leathers. It's like, let me i want to touch it it's like what is the big deal like somebody explain <laughs> well they can explain the explaining isn't really going to help me i just have to feel it hey nora hey d hey is caleb already done no caleb he runs long you know <laughs> we are we are cleaning I don't know if you were here from the unboxing, but I unboxed some perfume, cologne, actually. I don't know. It's actually the concentration. It's EDT, and then I have some EDP, and yeah, whatever. I don't know what the cologne concentration means. All I know is that I have some really cool new fragrances. Um, not quite. He's ending early. <laughs> well... It's hard to compete when everybody's going live on the same time on the same day. <laughs> and also, you know, he's only going live once a month. It makes it hard for people to remember to show up, to be honest. You know. So we are just cleaning. We're just putting some oil. This is mink oil. Mink oil is tried and true. It is a... It will slightly darken some leathers. You just don't want to throw it on anything. If you don't mind the dark and leather, throw it on something. It's fine. You know? And there we go. All right, let's soak it up. And it will get softer and beautiful. And this will help protect it some more. I might use, I might do another application later. Gee, that's amazing. Which bag did you get? Ooh. You got a Reed Karkhoff? Which one, D? Wait a minute. Did you show me? Oh no, Keith. Caleb. Um, K Caleb Snell is the guy with the red hair and beard, short hair, and then Jacob has long hair and a beard. Yeah. Well, since we're here, we'll do this one because I haven't, I didn't put any conditioner on this one yet. I'll send it. Okay. Oh, my phone is on um, 
airplane mode because inter- it, it interferes. But I will see it later. Oh, the D is it the boxer? It's the boxer. <laughs> I swear, if I wasn't on Ban Island, self-imposed, I would be buying um, uh, more boxers left and right. Because there's one on um, the real real I really want, but there is a thing called too much, okay? <laughs> there is a thing called too much. Um, and I'm trying not to be so greedy. We have to let other people buy things too, right? Not I can't rescue everybody. <laughs> Although I, I wouldn't mind getting a, a beat up one just to see if I could restore it. <laughs> For me, half the fun is doing this. You surpassed that a long time. Oh, yeah, that's true. Hey, Winnie. Hey, we're cleaning bags. And I was t- I'll was i show you the your bag. I cleaned your bag a little bit. And um, I know today is the day we have everybody going live. Jacob's live. Caleb's live. I'm live. Um, but... Winnie, I just put, I just, I did some saddle um, soap on her yesterday, and I just put some Apache cleaner on her, or cream on her. She, she, she's resurrected. She's resurrected. We'll put some mink oil on her, too, just because I have it out. Make her shiny. I love this bag. I think it's Jackie. It's the way to, uh. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm looking forward to my vacation, my mini vacation. We're going to go to Houston tomorrow after work. Today, the reason why I am not throwing this bag away, Winnie, I love this bag. You did not love this bag. I love this bag. Can you explain to Keith? <clears throat> why you had to put it in the in the washing machine, even though you cleaned it first in a bucket with gloves. <laughs> I love this bag. New Black is actually a really high quality leather, by the way. So even though um, you, this New Black is no a, a smooth leather, it's it's a really good quality leather, which is why it survived the washing machine. I'm not sure. I guarantee you New Coach wouldn't have survived the washing machine. It's only because of this age and beauty. Beauty. There we go. We're good. They are so nasty, I couldn't. <laughs> Winnie, uh, I lost three pounds last week. Very upsetting. Whoa, why? Three pounds a lot. Do you welcome to read family? Yes. <laughs> um, definitely the family of Reed Karkoff. A limited commodity. He really shouldn't have stopped making bags. They're just amazing. He, I like his bags a lot. Yeah. Yeah, you can say it's because they were very expensive bags, but the truth of the matter is, I've had really expensive bags um, in leather that weren't as good as those. Those are just amazing bags. Stop messing with it. So we put this away. So this is, I've used quite a bit of this. And I've only used this in three or four bags. But this one does not go as far as some of my other um, oils. And I used to have a different mink oil. But I guess I used it somewhere else. Who knows? But there we go. Oh, Winnie, let me show you. I pulled them all out. This 
is all perfume. All perfume. Yes. Including this. Yeah. Yeah. This is my favorite cologne. Or Dolce & Gabbana, the one. Absolute favorite. Um, yeah, this is what, this is the only thing James has ever asked me to stop buying. Everything else he's okay with. And for two years, I didn't buy any. I have bought a few since December, but I am not doing them. I compromised. <laughs> I compromised. And, um, oh, yeah. Dolce & Gabbana one is, like, the best. But, oh, I bought some new perf new cologne. Let me show you. This one just came out. This is Polo 67, brand new. Awesome. This has a, but, babe, this has a patchouli vetiver base, which I don't think you like the patchouli vetiver base, but really nice. Um, but I also got a Polo Earth candle and some samples. So I got the Earth Polo Earth. Now this one you might like because this one does not have patchouli in it. Um, so this is a 67 sample, and I got an oud, which I know you don't like, but I like oud. Um, so you and I have one tote bag of perfume. Oh, yeah. I have two tote bags. That was just the one tote bag I pulled up. I have two. Um, I don't know what Jess Box is. <laughs> Again, and when, when you know you have a problem. Yes, yes, yes. Again, when you know you have a problem. I actually have reduced my perfume collection. You, you would be surprised. I've actually given away a lot of my perfume um, and colognes because, again, you don't know if you like something until you buy them. A lot of the things I bought. Okay, so yeah, definitely try the... So my, my Polo Intense, that's like the classic green polo. Um, the Polo 67 is a little bit more modern. Um, it does have a patchouli base, but you don't get that Polo essence until, like, the end notes. Oh, my goodness. I love perfume. And but a lot of the ones I bought are Middle Eastern. A lot of them were from oil. Some of them are um, pre-loved. I would buy people's, you know. I have a lot. I love, and I could go to discount perfumers. And they're not knockoffs. They're just not... Um, branded designer at Macy's. I love um perfume perfumery <clears throat> is something that I really, 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 really enjoy. Um, but it's not something that everybody enjoys. And since it's a sharing is caring moment, um I had to compromise with James. <laughs> and so that's why I'm wearing more of the standard Western fragrances like Polo. Um, he wears a Ferrari fragrance that he likes. Um, no, wait. I think my all-time favorite scent, Amber Dior Amber Nui. Really? I don't know if I have an all-time favorite scent. I just got a Bobby Brown. I want the... Tur okay, so Saya said he'd send me one, but, you know, not holding my breath. If he does, yay. He's very... He did send me um, Amadex that I need to find where I put it because I put it somewhere safe and now I don't know where it is because um, I want to do a clean with me live with using the Amadex. Um, I'm not quite sure I like it. Really? It doesn't smell... Oh, wait. It doesn't smell like copper tone? So, D, what does it smell like to you? Yep, I'm a smell nice. I buy it. It stinks. No brain. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a lot of perfumes that smell great on me, but James doesn't like them. So since I carpool with him, like when I was driving myself, so when you first spray on perfume, cologne, whatever, the first opening is intense. It's pretty until it dies down with the propellant that's in there or the fixative. So it takes a minute for it to calm. And so um, in the car, in the morning, getting going to work, you spray on perfume, you go into the car, it's overwhelming. So I try not to do that. I took Emtex <laughs> two days. <laughs> hey, Don Loves Couture, how's it going? I'm not sure I can't quite explain it. Yeah, that's that's the thing about fragrances. It's like a sense of memory, and sometimes I smell something, and, and it doesn't smell that way. Like, I could not wear Chanel number five the cologne concentration which i had or the perfume concentration but i can wear the edt no problem so i didn't realize that different concentrations also smell differently i just thought it was like 
different levels of, you know, oil. I didn't realize it was not just that, but it's like the whole formula. 99.5% of my time, I reek of Chanel Blue. I need to try Chanel Blue and Hermes Terror. Um, yeah, I think I've seen that one too. I want to try the Hermes Voyage. Um, no, Chanel number five of any kind. Nope, not for me. Winnie, Jay, you like things a little bit more on the sweet side, but then you also wear something like by the fireplace. So I don't, I don't, I couldn't pick a perfume for you to save my life. You know, do you want it? I just smelled it again and I don't like it. Yes, 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 I would love it. But D, hang on to it. I'm going to Florida. I'll go meet you there. Um, we'll do a meetup. Don't the Voyage La Garden collection is... Oh, wait, wait. The Voyage isn't good. Oh, really? So, Hermes... Oh, Don says the La, the Garden collection is good. But not the Voyage? Okay. That's good to know. I don't know. I've, I've only smelled, like... Actually, do I... I don't think I've smelled any Hermes fragrances. Again, I don't live near one. <laughs> Deal, says D. <laughs> I guess so. I don't know about. I, I I tend to. I grew up with Estee Lauder perfumes and then um, Chanel perfumes because my mom wore them. Joy by Jean Patu, and then those were my mom's. My mom's not really. Hey, Erin. My mom's really not um, super many fragrances. She like knowing white linen, um, Chanel. So so I think she had a long comb fragrance or two, but she was very. She found one she liked and she just wore that one. Right. So she wasn't. She wore, um, she would do the whole body, um, body lotion, body powder, body perfume. I mean, we were in Asia. So Versace, Bright Crystal. I haven't tried the Versace's either. I have a, I'm not a huge fan of the Bedusa logoing, so I just don't, I don't have it, you know? I do like the Mont Guerlain or the Guerlain, and I also really, really like, um, let me pull it out, As Imperial, I think it's called Imperial. Let me find you. Oh, this is not Imperial, but this is one of the ones I like, too. I really like this bee bottle that they no longer make anymore. This is a beautiful bottle. This thing's gorgeous. Um, there's a Valentino that I got a sample of one time, loved so much, but I can't find the same scent to save my life. I believe it. They probably discontinued it. <laughs> oh, here it is. This one. This is my... Um, I love this one. This is a cologne. And the reason I bought this, I think this is their first, the first one they ever made. I think it's called the oh, Perry Francis Pascal Guerlain 1853 Cologne Imperial by Guerlain. So this one, I love these bee bottles. I think these bee bottles are the most beautiful things. Why they changed them, I will never know. Um... And this is La, La, it's, it's in, I can't pronounce it, guys. It's French or whatever. Ooh, Kevin could find it. He's good. What, what has, what was the bottle? Oh, hey! Bright Crystal doesn't have a logo, just an obnoxious cap. <laughs> yeah, I actually, Mongrelon is my, okay, so I have a story. Um, so I ordered this, but I didn't order this. I ordered this. They sent me this. So this is Bloom and Roses, which they don't know they don't make this one anymore. And this is the original. So this is a vanilla basic, kind of a vanilla base. So they sent me the wrong thing. So I said, hey, look, you sent me the wrong thing. And I know what I ordered and I know what this says. I had to show them photo proof that they sent the wrong thing. And then they sent me the right thing. And then I said, look, just send me the right one. Okay, just send me this one. I'll pay for it again. I don't care. I want this one because this was discontinued and I had to have it. Um, so they gave me this one at so basically they sold me this one, which is the EDP for the price of I think this is an EDT. So basically I got this cheaper than this. It was it was, but you can tell which one I actually wear, you know. This one I've wear. This one I think I think I've sprayed twice. You know. 
it's it's a very I should just give this to my mother in law because she likes vanilla. Um, your favorite is Shalimar. I have Shalimar. I like Shalimar. Uh, the red one, right? Wait a minute. No, that's not Shalimar. That's what am I thinking of? We were talking about dupes. This is a dupe. This is from Da Fair. This is like the only one of the ones I have left. It's a Florentine Orient Florent Floriental cedarwood. Now they don't use Floriental. They don't use the word Oriental in perfumery anymore because it's apparently not politically correct. I don't get it. Um, it's a perfume. So, but this is a really nice one. It is a Mandarin, cardamom, orange blossom, jasmine, sambox, cedarwood, heliotrope flowers. I think this is um, a dupe for one of the Chanel's, but I don't know. But a lot of what I have are things like this. This is a coffee note. This is in Middle Eastern. I really like the El Hermain. And I really like, um, <laughs> you think Americans like fragrances as a French? No, 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 no. Middle Eastern. They have perfumery. They, I mean, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And they really like pure oils. So, yeah. We have, no the French have nothing on the Middle East when it comes to perfume. Um, the French don't think that. But... <laughs> Dossier doesn't last very long. No, but it's good. It's a nice office scent because it doesn't last very long. In middle school, I wore skin musk body spray. Yummy. Um, Winnie Wright. Oh, no, Craig, I did that with a sample on a little mailer from Belk. I loved it so much, but it got thrown away. Oh, no. That's my problem. My LV with LV scents. I bought a few of them. Smell wonderful. Doesn't last 30 minutes. Yeah, it just doesn't work for everybody. I love a coffee based black opium is my favorite. I I've had black. I've, well, my sister is an opium girl. She let she wore opium for years and years and years. Um, opium and um, samsara, which yes, that's what I was thinking of. The red one. You said Shalimar. Shalimar's the blue one. No, Samsara, which I don't think they make anymore, or there's they change something in the ingredients or something. Um, like, I don't know. There's something, like, you can't get it here for some reason, or someone said. I'm pretty sure I heard it on Jacob's channel. But, um, she wore the coffee once, and my friend wears the black opium, and then I want to see what the green opium smells like, but I haven't, I'm not really an opium perfume person i love smoky woodsy i like wood like i could just walk around smelling like cedar to be honest i love cedar i'm allergic to cedar but i love cedar descent <laughs> it's like cedar smells awesome um i like and uh, but then i also like stuff like uh green tea by elizabeth arden i like florals james doesn't really like the florals so much so that's why on me even on me he doesn't i think he has childhood trauma from church or something all the church ladies you know wearing too many perfumes and his mother just wears vanilla almost all scents i love byredo i don't think i've smelled byredo anything black saffron is very good too i who makes black saffron? I don't know that one. The Fleur Biblioteca Rose in No Man's. Oh, Rose of No Man's Land. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just, I, my perfumes come out of Macy's, or they come out of Perfume Mania, which is like, you know. So I don't, and I haven't even bought anything like this. Is literally the first time I've purchased polo from polo because it was on sale it was cheaper than buying it from because um, it's a brand new fragrance it, it was cheaper than getting it off of macy's do you like james henley healy so anyway i love i love this this is so cool 
I don't know if this is a refillable bottle, though. This is crimped pretty tight. I'm going to have to see if I bought a refillable bottle because I wanted to. It doesn't matter. I don't know why I'm worried about this. I'm never going to. With all the perfume I have, I can use it. At, spray three sprays a day for the rest of my life and still not use all of it. I shouldn't worry about it. Just move on. Move on. Don't don't worry about it. You can just buy a new bottle. Um, Hi, Mirella. I don't know. It's my first live for anything. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, I, I've only been on YouTube for a year, so I'm kind of a newbie myself. Uh, I do like lives, so we're just chatting. Nothing cool or nothing like vital. We're just hanging out, talking with each other. We're talking fragrances right now. I did show a couple things I bought, which was fragrances. And I, oh, Winnie, I don't know if you saw it. Um, my new bag. I, I use this bag today. This has definitely become one of my favorite totes. Um, this color. I love how they did this. All the colors in here. Uh, and the back. I think the back is just as beautiful as the front. Isn't that beautiful? Um, so this is my new to me bag. I know beige. <laughs> I love beige bags. My sister's like, why do you keep buying beige bags? Like, them, they're pretty. You know, she doesn't agree. Um, yeah, you'll Morella, you'll see a lot of content creators here. Uh Don Las Couture has a channel. Um Winnie B has a channel. Who else has a channel in, in this live? Sometimes we get a bunch of content creators hanging out with us. Uh today's not that many folks because we have um well we had 27, 27 people watching. We have quite a few people out there doing lives today. Um I fought the buying bug hard. Oh my gosh, Winnie, you kind of failed. I mean, I didn't buy a purse, which I'm proud. Um, it's been one week of my reforming, but I did buy um, a mug and I bought a ring. So, baby steps, baby steps, you know? <laughs> I did not buy a bag. And there, there are several bags I wanted to buy. And I told James, I just have to stop. Um, it's not, he, James isn't imposing this on me, guys. This is just me trying to change my behaviors and change habits and try not, and I have a great many bags. And since I'm not moving them along, I need to stop adding to them. Um, Keith says, if you love unique fragrances, Dawn, um, check out Jasmine and Bubblegum Cheek. Yes, I know. Great company. Hey, thank you. Um, Caleb is done. <laughs> hey, D. Hagenbachum, thank you. Uh, maybe he'll jump in. I don't know. He doesn't really come to my lives. So he'll probably go over to Jacob's live. Um, Jacob did a surprise live, so nobody was prepared for that. Um, but, you know, so yeah, if y'all don't know, Jacob, Super Jacob's live. I don't know if he's still alive, but he was alive. Um, Jacob is still going. To get, Jacob might be going for five hours. The the man says this is his test run, but that normally means five hours. <laughs> oh, hey, Monarch. Um, yeah, so I had a cr crummyish day. So we're doing training. And I'm learning a new software that eventually, in about a year's time, I need to be an expert in. Like, I need to know all this all the steps and that's not too daunting because uh, again software as long as you know what it can do you can figure out how to do it um so the training was live data now if you've ever been in a training program most of the time you're given program or, or um, what do you call it a project that's tried and true all the data merges in everything looks great every, all the functions work oh look at this magic you know, but that's not real life we're using live data that's on a real project that's due, that's due like yesterday. So we're watching our friend um, do this. And he's the only guy, he's the subject matter expert for this particular software. He's training us because we will have to be doing this. So as, as many people as he can train, the better for him because we're the ones having to go train the rest of the state, right? So... <laughs> We're sitting there, and I'm like, "Oh wow, so the data was came in wrong because exported wrong," <laughs> and it's not any fault. I mean, the data's there. You just had to it, the way it was exported out, so we had to go get it from a different software. I mean, everything that could go wrong went wrong today. Everything. 
So, I mean, but the truth is, this is what happens. This happens all the time. This happens on, like, the daily. It's like, you get data, go back to the original source. How, what went wrong? How do we fix it? So, basically, I had eight-hour headache. Let's just be honest. Um, let's see. I've been wearing it all, all, wearing it this week. Winnie says, we were told today about restructure, but our job, who is it? Winnie. Great news. Thank you, Winnie. I was so worried uh, because nobody wants to hear the word restructure unless it's, you know, and especially if you're in middle management, because that's normally who gets restructured, let's be honest. Um, North is slowly but surely as the saying goes, Don says, thank God Winnie. Morella says, hi, Nora. Winnie says, how do you eat an elephant just one bite at a time? Over a long period of time. <laughs> Uh, Craig says, you you have to know the software within a year. Won't the program be absolute? Oh, absolute in a year? No. It'll probably go through about two more updates. Um, and But that's fine, because updates are fine. I can deal with updates. It's just that when I, when I say I have to know the program, I have to know the program well enough to help other people navigate through the issues. So, yeah. It'll be fine. I mean, I'm not. I'm not repping the product. I'm not. I just have to help people either do the work for them or show them how to do the work. And the best thing for me is to show them how to do the work so they can do it. But it's it's kind of apples and oranges because, like, look, we only have six licenses until we buy more licenses, and like six people at a time can do it. So it's a big state. It's it's. I'll tell you offline, Craig. <laughs> Um, congrats, Winnie, says Craig. Thank you. Uh, they offered a bunch of the big high, the off, yeah, because oh, it's it's called um, the pyramid's the wrong way when it comes to, you know, corporate. It's probably it's too much off, the, you know, take, take it off the top. D says, we are getting ready to open a new free standing ER. I spent most of the day dealing with computers and printers. The outlet mall is across the interstate. I was good. <laughs> I didn't go. D, that's amazing. Um, that is amazing. And dealing with printers is a nightmare. Networking is a nightmare. Having to, in our paperless society, if we have a lot of paper printed still, it's a nightmare. <laughs> D, that's exciting. Don says, yay, D. Nora says, when I get an, a new diagnosis, I take out my CC and buy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Nora. I understand that. Unfortunately, I also do that when other people get bad news or just news and um, bad news, good news. Both of them are, you know, commiserating or celebrating. I still buy something. <laughs> so I buy uh, one guy made like what 10 of us make. Oh, yeah. Um, Here's the thing, Winnie. That guy that made 10 of what one of you makes probably also got a severance package. He's fine. <laughs> He's fine. Um, yeah. So, uh, like, a lot of the people in... um, We have this weird upside-down kind of thing. We have a bunch of, like, 60% of our workforce currently in my organization, which is a state agency, are eligible or up for eligibility and retirement within five years. 60%. So there's this huge gap of we have all these um, boomers that are about to retire um, or could be retired, but they still have kids or grandkids or something's happening, college tuition, whatever. And then you have all these millennials coming in at 20 somethings. And so there's this huge gap and <laughs> it's not always the best because we're losing a lot of our knowledge in one go, you know, so I'm calculating um, what I can make retired. Um, golden parachute lives in the lakeside mansion already. Yeah, he probably is fine. But you know what? I know a person who has, uh, he owns, he's 80 years old. He is still working. He is a lobbyist. Um, he, he makes plenty of money. He spends most of his time networking at the country club, you know, right? But, um, he makes a ton of money. His family spends it as fast as he can makes it. He's 80. He still 
you know, his wife is still buying things. Daughter's still buying things on dad's credit card. Daughter's married. Daughter has a kid. Doesn't matter. They have one kid. So, th- yeah, he might make a lot. He, his, his family spends a lot. So, is everything okay, hun? Okay, yeah. Um. Anyway, our puppy is our Watson is out with Auntie Caitlin, our friend. She's He's being house sat because um, we're going away for the weekend. And she offered, and I think really she just wanted Watson cuddles. Oh, yeah, Aidy, he's, he's a lobbyist. I mean, a lobbyist. How much is his, is most of his working is networking and talking to senators, okay? It's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same working. <laughs> Yeah, kids do stay on the purse strings. Yeah. He's like, he has one kid. You know, he married a younger woman and they had one daughter and um she gets whatever she wants, even though she's married. So it still worked. Oh yeah, but he he loves it. He loves it. I I you know, I'm like, really? He's still working? I, I say the same thing. Like he's still working, you know, but he'd rather be working than at home. So I was like, okay. I, I guess that says more about his home life than anything, I guess. Thanks everyone for liking the video. This is the first time. Oh, really? It matches the chat. Thank you everybody for liking my live stream. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, I really did have a bad day today. Oh, not bad day, just a brain mush day because and James was like he, James was in James was in his heaven because this is a software he's been having to deal with and he really wanted to do this and we've been needing to do this for a long time. The thing is the company that owns the software who makes it manufactures it is in Finland. Finland, and we can't just go get training because we'd have to go to Finland or pay them to come out over here. So we do have one subject matter expert who's working with this data and on the software to make this, and we have to use this. It's, it's a long story. Anyway, James was really excited, so he was having a great day, and he's like, Jackie. Did you get anything out of that? Like, yeah, sure. Once I downloaded the 900-page PDF from the software company, yeah, it was great. Because then it made more sense. Uh, where's the trolls? Those br- Hey, Winnie, don't invite them over here. They don't show up here, Winnie. They follow you. I don't know what you have done, but the trolls have all found you, and they won't leave you alone. But they don't find me. I barely have trolls. Like, I maybe had two mean troll comments in my entire time doing lives. Don't invite them. Keep that mojo somewhere else. <laughs> it's like, we don't need the trolls, you know? <laughs> Oh, my husband's co-worker is in the 70s and still works full-time 60 hours a week to help pay for grandkids' schooling. I believe in Nora. I mean, kids are expensive. I mean, expensive. And this is like, um, don't get a lot of trolls here. They all, they, 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 they all go to Winnie's Live on Tuesday. I know, so random, right? Right? Like, Winnie, what, what is it on a Tuesday evening that gets you like 2,000 visitors from trolls? You know, um, but what happened this week was, um, well, I'm, I'm sure everybody saw the Baltimore bridge collapse. I just about stopped speaking. I'm like, because it's like, wow, the economic consequences of that bridge collapse is huge. Not just the infrastructure of building that bridge again, but the interruption to traffic uh channel traffic it's like shipping is huge shipping is huge people do not really understand how much of our goods and commerce is moved by shipping a lot and you know people are always like about environment okay this is my jackie rant moment as a geographer uh, everybody worries about the um gas and oil consumption and driving cars well honestly what uses most Petroleum products is actually shipping, and uh, yeah, it's it's it it's a lot, you know, and uh, yeah, it's not us. I mean, we don't help driving cars everywhere, but it's really shipping, and a lot of the waste in um, landfills is actually construction waste. Uh, so it's not actually us. I mean, it is us, but it's concrete. <laughs> So, Baltimore is the largest movers of cars. Yeah, 
to the D. Um, Nora says, the first time I saw two trolls in Winnie's live with Don Donuts, the comments disappeared very quick. Yeah, Don was on it, right? Um, yeah. No, that was... Oh, well, Don Left Couture did it. Keith, you should be good babe. Oh, Keith, I meant to make you my... Wait. I forgot to do that. I have to do that now. Why it took me so long to remember to do... How do I do this? Oh, can I do this? Oh no, I might have to do this in YouTube Studio. This is not cool. Yep, I'm gonna have to do this in studio, Keith. Nope, no, no, not hide. Um, no, no. How I wanted to make Keith my moderator, but I'm not using a I'm using a different platform, so I can't make him a mod. I'll have to do it, I'll have to do it live in YouTube Studio and then do it there. Or see if I can do it from studio differently i'll figure it out um jesus can be one of my moderators um yeah, subway or jersey mics <laughs> um dawn is fast on the draw poor keith hello hey grace let me see if i oh i can't um maybe i can um let me go over here in my studio can i do that I don't know if I can. I'll have to figure it out. Um, oh, no, 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 Craig. No, 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 no. No, I'm not replacing you, Craig. Craig, you're irreplaceable. 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 Um, actually, Linda Paso suggested I um, have Keith as one of my mods because she says that I didn't have enough moderators because, um, which I don't know why. I feel like I have enough moderators, but whatever. Um, I know I didn't block you though. I'm not replacing. I'm hiring. <laughs> Craig, you're irreplaceable. You cannot be replaced. Um, Wendy needs an army of mods. <laughs> that is so funny. You've been restructured, Craig. Craig, aren't you? Winnie isn't. Um, I don't want to. Next Tuesday, Winnie, who's your guest? Just saying. <laughs> we need Craig's bad bag hunting knowledge. Oh my gosh, right, Hetty? Not only that, it's like somebody had said, um, oh, well behaved wallet. She's on my she's a friend of friend of mine on um Facebook, and she said that she saw this bag. And she says, you find the most stylish bags that are something, so, some lovely compliment such as that. And I said, no, no, no. It has nothing to do with me. Craig found this. <laughs> Craig told me about this. Um, left up to my own devices, Jackie buys Disney bags. <laughs> so I need somebody to help me elevate the style some. Because if it wasn't for Craig, I would not have found. I mean, I knew about Ralph Lauren, but I just never bought any. And then um, I never knew about Reed. Uh. And he gave me my first read bag, so, and I gave him his first Dooney bag, so it's, it's equal equal love sharing here, um, because I love Dooney. As the moderator is one of the who watches the comments and controls the ugly. Yes, yes, that's what moderators do. They they can um, delete, suspend, or kick out people, um, put people on pause too. I think I'm with Winnie in two weeks. Okay, two weeks. I wasn't sure if it was this week or. Okay, so Dee Dee Beans next week. Oh, by the way, I was supposed to go live with Dee Dee's today, <laughs> but she she we shelved we shelved that because if you got if you caught her with Yoda, um, which by the way Yoda her interview with Yoda was relatively great. Um, they had an interruption of connection issue, so Dee Dee's husband is working from home right now, so the bandwidth was not bandwidthing, and we had storms, so it was. I was listening the whole time. It's just I was commuting, so I figured um, it was just me commuting. But no, it was really the connection was bad. Yeah. Tuesday after. Okay, wait a minute. That's the Tuesday I'm on a cruise. No, I'm gonna miss a lot. Oh man, I'll be there in spirit. Bummed. Okay, I'm starting to understand. <laughs> Yeah, that's what the French means, and the blue and the blue means that they can just. Um, so normally the 
post person hosting, which would be me, is the person who could kick people out also or suspend or, you know, whatever. Um, if you have people doing comments, um, YouTube does really good with filtering comments too. Sometimes I'll hold them for review, um, especially with certain keywords and phrases. Keith Winnie has so many. She's oh yeah, oh oh my gosh. Winnie I don't know how it happened that she just has like 2,000 people hanging out in her lives. Has it reflected in your revenue, though? I want to know. Are they at least watching and clicking and, and, and getting you the ad revenues? Because it is about the views when it comes to ad revenue, not just the subscribers. Just the um, Keith, no clue what, why it's happened. Uh, Craig says, there's so many trolls in these live lately. I have been having seizures from all of the flashes and chats. <laughs> and they're gone. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's good. Because <laughs> before I can process that they're serious. Well, yeah. I actually don't. When I go to live. Excuse me. When I go to live. I don't really chat. Because I'm listening to live. And I can't follow all the conversations. That's why when on my lives. I spend a lot of time reading your chats out. And just talking to you guys. Because yeah. Oh my gosh Winnie. That's awesome. $4.87. I was actually looking at my. Um, my numbers so i make between 44 cents and like four dollars depending on what how long and when i say four dollars that's like for like a three hour live <laughs> in ad revenue so nobody is working on youtube for the ad sense so to be honest it doesn't hurt but it doesn't help <laughs> i mean no it does help it doesn't hurt but it's not a lot there. That makes more sense. There was only one troll that pissed me off. This avatar was, oh, no, no, that person gets booted. No, heck no. Um, D, you got some before I saw them. <laughs> D, yeah, that guy. Yeah, no, 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 no. We don't, we don't do that. That is, that is white supremacy stuff. I can't, that's like, nope. Ban Island, go! You are no longer, no longer allowed to be here. We are not friends. Um, there's still one fifth of a read bag for you. That, well, okay, that one read bag. That's like a deal of the lifetime, Keith. There's no way I will ever find guys. This gorgeous leather bag I got for twenty dollars plus tax and shipping, so it was thirty eight dollars. But it cost the listing price was legitimately twenty dollars. I thought it was a fluke. I literally thought when I bought this, it wasn't going to be the bag they sent me, or it was going to be the Reed line, not the Reed Karkoff line, because the photos were crap. But I was just like, it had a split leather strap, which is why it was for sale. I think so low, but twenty bucks was like the give me price, you know. And I had to rescue it. And I had to. I had to. You know, the listing was bad. I think I was their only listing. Um, I hate anything like, oh, yeah. And anyone that shred decency should be outraged. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I will s say the mods kicked him so quick. <laughs> It was fast. Blows my mind. Yeah, right. Well, here's the thing. How I get these wonderful deals is I spend lots of lots and lots and lots and lots of hours, lots of hours looking at pre-love sites, which I'm not doing now. Uh, so we will not be getting those deals anymore because we are not buying bags. Um, I have to get rid of some bags. I cannot keep buying all these bags. I have no more space. Hey, Melissa. Melissa, I have not seen you put out a video in a minute. Is everything going good? Because, or am I just missing your videos? Um, those minds, that's the deal. Oh, yes. Actually, um, I actually think <laughs> this one was $50. I guess I know this one is pretty good, but I guess for the amount of money. Um, that this one, this one cost originally, proportionately, this would be the best deal. I would have to say you're right. Yeah. Just saying I found another read 40 and 40 for today for 600. Whoa. Yeah. D, the read had the original price tag. Yeah. A thousand dollars. It paid 185. Um, 
Yes, because people people want the it bag and they don't I mean a five year old bag for a lot of people isn't the it bag or they don't use it anymore or they moved on to new bags and um we are consumer co- we're we are consumption and consuming, so people just want the next new thing. Um Ricardi dropped the seller's fees. I sold a ton this week. Really? Okay, they dropped my seller's fees and I haven't sold a ton this week. <laughs> yeah, I might have just be missing a few. One comes out at midnight. Okay. Um Okay, I'm stepping off, having a good night. Good night, Dawn. Um, D, that's such a good deal. I bought most of my read new boutiques, so I love getting these deals now. Wow. So you 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 paid the but you know what here, Craig? That means you got them brand new and they're probably as perfect as when you bought them because I can't imagine anything in your collection not being perfect if you bought brand new from boutique. Um Jackie, did you hear that the old designer from Gucci is going to be the new designer for Valentina? What? They got rid of their current creative director. Wait a minute, Gucci's the Gucci. Oh, really? The guy who worked for Gucci for like 15 years and they axed him? Oh my goodness, that's awesome. I'm not a huge fan of Valentina, but I might be now because I liked him. I thought he was good. I, I liked his stuff. I didn't think they were boring at all. But people said they was boring. I'm like, I like Gucci? I don't know why people thought that because Gucci is like very popular with my sister's children, like her high school children. Gucci is like the Gucci has been used as a catchphrase for cool. Like I grew up saying the word cool. They're saying the word Gucci as as the new like, oh, that's so Gucci. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like Jennifer had to explain it to me. I'm like, oh, can I just stay with cool? Cool is good. I think now the new catchphrase that people are using is it's a vibe. I've I've caught on to that one at least. It's a vibe. But it's so Gucci or that's Gucci as as a term of good. It's weird. Um I bet they're oh yeah, you know Craig's bags are gorgeous. And if he bought them brand new, mm-hmm. Coach dropped a rainbow leather chain in pastel. Oh my goodness. Winnie, you don't need that. You don't need that. And but Winnie, did you see the outlet? Okay, my my mm. oh yes, Alexandro McKaylee. Thank you. Thank you for saying that, D. Um Craig says, I think so, but some of my exotic read bags have a lot of Paqueta leather too. I'm trying to figure out how to balance the patina. Moisturizing it. I did that with um this one. And you can really see it, the aging process and the color changing right here. So it's a little bit of yellowing here. Um, so when I put a little bit of conditioner on this, it will probably even out some more. You know, I haven't. I, yeah, this is, it's a little difficult. The Viquetta, the, that is a conundrum. It's like, do you darken it further when you even it out? Or you just let it fit. I don't know. It's gonna get darker. Um, I I like everything is Gucci. Yeah. Um, when you what? Yes. Uh, the term Gucci uh, D is what the youth of today say for something that's really cool. Is that they know that it's so Gucci. Is it's, it's something they say in high school? So I mean, people give a lot of. Uh, Gucci's doing fine. You know, God give me the strength to not buy it. <laughs> to not buy what? D. Higginbotham. Oh, the Valentino. Wait a minute. Yeah. Do, 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 do. The huge reed tote I have bought new in boutique three fourth raw vaquetta and one fourth python vaquetta. It's getting this weird orangey color. Hmm. I think you're just going to have to put some conditioner on it that won't change colors and then maybe try with the one that might help darken it a little bit. Just maybe. So I went to coach Australia website and I saw a gorgeous denim hobo. Oh, Grace. That's so cool. Oh, I was, uh, that's what I was saying. Winnie, Winnie, did you see the new outlet coach drop? Because, Oh my God. So I was like, coach, I hate you. So a year ago, I hate and love coach. It's a love hate relationship. Um, a year ago, they came out with a canvas bag, leather trim. I think it's called a Theo or Thea bag over in the boutique. Gorgeous bag. Absolutely gorgeous. $700. Loved it. Loved it then. Love it now. Uh, 
fast forward to today and coach just dropped a brand new leather trim canvas outlet not the thea tote not the same size tote but they have a bag and i forgot the name of it suspiciously a lot like the beat bag um but it's a saddle type bag but it's really functional the measurements are almost like the coach cassie i'm like i see you coach i see what you're doing so give it a week or two it'll probably go on sale no, Jackie, the pastel ring. Oh, the pastel. Oh, not to buy the pastel. It will go on sale, especially if it was in the boutique, guys. Um, you do not need a pastel rainbow chain. I'll tell you about the chain. If you don't have one. Now, here's the thing about the chains. They are decorative. These are the most uncomfortable things to put on your shoulder, like literally to put on your shoulder. Not comfortable. They really aren't. I am... I don't like these as as a as a decorative item as a top handle. Great, use it, have fun, love it. Um, this actually goes this way. Um, so this is the men's charter bag, and um, I love this bag, but this strap is very expensive for what it is for something that's just pretty. It really is just pretty. You can buy a whole bag for how much they charge these straps, you know. Just like I, I can't, I can't just. Maybe I just don't accessorize enough. But this, without this bag, without this strap, would have been a hundred dollars cheaper. Mm hmm. Uh, I'm dying for Coach to release that huge Birkin. Oh yeah, do you think they're gonna make it? Oh, you said it's in the fall. Um, do you have a Coach? Um, what do you call those people? Sales associates, Craig. This is one that's made of recycled denim and old style revived. That's cool, Grace. I'm going to have to look that up. Is that in the coach retail or the coach outlet? Nora, I learned something new. Gucci. Yeah, Gucci is a new catchphrase. Or it was. I need to ask my sister what's changed. Um, that chain, though, it's been a struggle. Yeah, this is gorgeous. This chain is beautiful. It's a gorgeous thing. It's a work of art. I think it's brilliant. It is not comfortable. I do have three different cities. <laughs> well, did they, are they gonna? Did they actually produce it? Coach retail. You know. Nope, not messing with it. I'm itching to to moisturize this, and I'm just gonna put this aside. That's doing pretty good. After the, I used a, a darkening conditioner on it. It's still a little light in the center. A little dark here, but I think it looks a little bit better. I love this bag. It's on the website. It's still set, wait, 795 Australian dollars. Really? For a denim hobo? I'm not sure what the conversion rate for seven, almost $800 in Australian is in, in, in American dollars, but that seems rather expensive for a cotton bag, just saying. Um, they don't know yet, but they're watching it for me. Woohoo! Let's see which, which of your uh, client advisors, sales associates, whomever calls you first. Get that Coach Birkin Marco tote. Hee <laughs> hee, yes. Um... No, not that. I love that bag, Winnie. Winnie, I love this bag. <laughs> I saw it, Winnie. She hearted it for me later down the road. Frozen luxury, aloha, Saya. I am having a good. Well, I had a very intensive, busy work day that was stressful and melted my brain, but um, I am having a wonderful evening with everybody. Um, so yes, yeah, six hundred dollars. Is it is the translation for that? That's expensive for a denim bag. For denim, are you sh denim? I mean, I saw one. A Tory Miss Tory Birch made a denim bag, and it was something like seven hundred dollars. But dude, there's a there's a bag out right now that I really want. It's um from Ralph Lauren, and it's five hundred dollars on sale. Um, I think it was at one of those high-end department stores. Beautiful bag. Absolutely gorgeous. But it's still denim cotton. 
it used USD 600 from normal price. Wow. I'm not being ripped off. <laughs> Grace, no, I'm not going to buy it. Oh, yeah, Grace. Yeah, no, no. Oh, AUD to USD. Yeah, so it's from almost 800 Australian dollars. It's almost 700. That's not much of a 600. So $200 backwards. Okay, it's not that. I mean, the conversion is not as extreme as it sounds, but the cost of $600 for a denim coach bag is insane. Um, thank you, Luxational. Hey, um, no, I just, you know, look, Super Jacob is live. Caleb went live. I just was going to go live because I don't know if I'm going to be live tomorrow. I really don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to have Wi-Fi. I don't know if I'm going to have wireless. I have no idea what time I'm going to show up in Houston in our hotel. Um, traffic is going to be a nightmare. It's Easter weekend, guys. I'm traveling on Easter weekend. And we're coming back on Easter. No. Um, I had my phone projector and iPad going. Hey, you were in everybody's live tonight, Saya. That's awesome. Um, Jackie, you're at two hours. Oh, thank you, Craig. Um, I was with my brother and sister in law. Oh, yeah, you're in you're in Arizona. How is the, how is the weather? Um, you know, it's this morning. I asked Miss AI over there what the weather is. Like I do every morning, and she says low of XYZ, high of XYZ. Like, how am I supposed to dress for a 30 degree swing in one day? Um, ooh, Jacob is live later today. I hope he is okay. Oh, yeah, he's live today. He's live right now. Or he was. He did a surprise Thursday live. If Grace, if you want to go see him, that's fine. Um, he He's not talking about details uh, about his surgery, but he is talking about his health. Um, he will be mentioning some on Saturday, I think. But he's, he's well enough to be doing um, a live today, which is awesome. Um, um, I was going to... What was I going to do? Oh, it's over here. Right here. So remember I told you I was going to put a big patch on here? Um, I lived in Houston for six months at the Hotel Zaza. Wow. Um, I always missed his live. <laughs> um, this is a fig pen, extra large. This was a Walmart exclusive, I think. So I bought this when they first came out. Love this pen. This is a giant pen, giant pen that I put on this bag. I love this bag. I think this is so cool. Like, am I going to carry this? Probably not, because I'd be afraid something happening to this pen. <laughs> but look! I will forever be a Disney fan. I first got my first... I got my first brand endorsement yesterday. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, that's exciting! Wait a minute, you have a brand endorsement yesterday legitimate brand endorsement so i'm low-key i would be super excited you have a brand endorsement that is so cool that is very cool yeah mm. while i'm thinking about it i need to take medication so just hang out with me i got my first okay that's so so, so exciting guys um I had to, we had to go to the pharmacy today because it closes early. So we, we, yay for sponsors. I wouldn't mind a sponsor or two, but I don't know. I, I don't, um, my sponsorships cost me money. I always end up buying more. Um, get that coin. I think it's just fun to have, um, endorsements with people who like you, you know, um, for the coming. I actually really like Naomi. She's she's become becoming a friend, not just a sponsor. And I'm super excited to get some more bags from her when I can afford them. They're not exactly inexpensive, but they're beautiful. And I love the whole idea of upcrafting, upcycling. Um, that's just my vibe, you know. I really just like the idea of using something that's already there, turning it into something else, or just, you know modifying what you got um 
If only Saya would buy me perfume samples. Ha! Huh. Wait and wait, wait, buy my perfume samples. Okay, Winnie, I was in that live. I heard that. <laughs> you have to let that go. Um, that's great, Birkin Boy Gang. You're getting famous. He is famous. I, I, well, he's famous. I think he's famous. You've seen his Instagram. He has a following. I have alarms for medication. That's the only way I can remember to take these. Yeah, well, you have a lot. So I just have to take a whole bunch at night and like one, and they're all in here. See, meds. This is what I have to take on my cruise because I used to have them in these little pill cases. Um, Oh, Jacob is going over the Hermes lawsuit. I'll catch it on the replay. Um, but it's um, because when you go on a cruise, they want you to have everything in the original prescribed bottles because if something happens, if there's a medical emergency, they want to need, if you have a heart condition, they need to know which medication it is. Like, you're not going to be probably there with the wherewithal to tell them it's that specific white pill with all the other white pills. You know, what did you get? For, oh yeah, Saya. What did you end up with? Because I was, I didn't text, but I was like the pickles, the pickles for sure. But then you were doing like the burger with the chili. And I'm like, and the onion rings. I think you said, but I'm like, that's a lot. I would have gone with the pickles, you know, because I I love myself some pickles. Um, Jacob is yeah, oh, Hermes lawsuit. I think isn't that Hermes lawsuit done? I might have gotten honey bacon cheese curds with chili on top. You did get that. Okay, so for me, um, I liked okay, so I like the bacon cheese curds with chili on top. I don't think I can do the honey. I don't like the sweet. Um, but I was listening to your talk about Hawaiian food because I'm all about the spam. Um, spam masubi is one of my favorite things. If I could make my own locomoco, I would love to do it. But uh, the, the gravy, you have to know this. And yeah, I, I eat rice. I used to eat rice with, rice with everything as an Asian person. But um, yeah, I have had to curb that because of my diabetes. Yeah. Um, what did anybody? What did everybody else have for dinner? I actually haven't had dinner. It's like um four. It's about eight forty-five. I'm probably not going to eat dinner. Honestly, rice is everything. I agree. But man, talk about having a debate about rice. Um, I'll eat spam and rice. Yeah, I actually make a casserole that his mom, James's mom, really likes, and it's it's a spam potato onion casserole. It's fried onions with fried spam, and then when well, when I say fried, I mean like browned. You know, you saute it, and then you add in cr cream of mushroom, cream of celery, or cream of chicken, whichever cream you like. You know, and then you add in potatoes, and then you bake it. And then you add cheese, lots of cheese. I don't actually like the cheese because I don't like lots of cheese. Um, I like some cheese, not lots of cheese. Um, but his mother loves that. I can make that. It's the one thing I make that she really loves. Asians are hot <laughs> and also thin. They eat five times a day. In, in Thailand, people eat five times a day. But it's, it's what they eat. The food is completely different. Uh, but it's changing some. They're having a little bit more problem with obesity in Asia because of the food cultures changing. Um, loco moco. I think Asian countries have got to walk a whole lot. Yeah, they do have to walk a whole lot. Um, you walk everywhere. High density um, populations. You do you do a lot more walking. A lot of uh, mass transit. Um, there's a lot of cultural shame too around over being overweight. Um, Winnie Patrick, my boss, says he wants to do a Wednesday. Oh my gosh, that's so cool, Winnie! Oh my gosh, that's so neat. Patrick and Winnie on Wednesday. That is awesome. Um, for weight loss Wednesdays. <laughs> Fried spam sandwich with cheese. Yeah. Girl, bye. I walked from one end of the house to the other today and thought I was dying. I can't do much walking, guys. I really can't. I need to do more walking, but my back do not like it. Like yesterday, when I got into bed, I was in bed like at seven something. My back was singing hallelujah because it hurt. I was just like, oh, just relaxed because I sit 
all day and I'm working and I'm tense. And then when I lay down, it's like, ow, why did that hurt? You know, it's like, oh yeah, I remember now. You know? So first crush, Jaden Wong. Oh, mom. Well, yeah, Asian moms are very particular about who they're Asian. You know, they're very particular. Um, that's all I got to say. Like my our James's college friend is Mong. He's an ethnic group out of Laos, and uh, he's only his parents have been putting up and having on on um blind dates as, as long as they can remember with other Hmong girls because it has to be another Hmong girl. It can't just be any girl. He's still single. I love Asian men. That's all I can say. Craig, <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. I love it. Um, yes, we're talking about it today. Um, <laughs> she said, nope, he's not home. <laughs> it's called, yeah. yeah. Asian moms, guys, Asian moms. They're very invested in the next generation. They really, really want grandchildren. Um, my mother still would like grandchildren, and I'm like, sorry. Uh, I'm 44. Not happening. You know, there's plenty of folks out there that have babies in their 40s. I'm not one of them. Um, and no, my husband is incredibly not Asian. <laughs> That's funny. We can admire the look. Come on. It's funny. James, you know, speaking of like attraction, I am not James's type at all. Like, at all. Like, if he, he, no, I'm not his type. I don't think I had a type, um, but I never thought I'd be married to a, just a white guy, to be honest. I thought I'd be married to another ethnic guy, some ethnic, some type of ethnic, not just British. I think his whole family's from England, um, the forefathers and all, and, uh, I think there's some Native Americans stuck in there just because we came to America and, you know, that's what happens. But, um, yeah, I think his whole family is from, like, the British Isles, both sides. And here I am, half Asian, half Irish American, and I'm like, how did this happen? <laughs> um, I find that interesting, Birkin Boy. A lot of Western women find Asian men not masculine enough. Really? Um... Oh, you think it's because of K-pop? Grace, I've always had a thing. I don't want all that old-fashioned mindset, though. Oh, yeah, it's true. Um, Grace, I love David Broomstead. Bromstead. <laughs> you're not getting grandchildren. You're getting what I'm sorry. <laughs> right? And so when I married James, I married him. We were like, 27 when we got married and we thought we were old because a lot of our friends you know were married and already had kids out of you know high school and here we are 27 years old getting married now we look back and like we were babies we didn't know nothing and um we didn't have children i didn't want children we before we got married i said hey look i have this ovarian syndrome i don't i don't want to take fertility drugs at the time everybody on a fertility medication was having like five and eight babies i'm like i'm not doing i don't even want twins and i'm a twin i'm like uh-uh i'm not doing fertility fertility medications so if you want to have babies i'm not the girl for you and we can adopt but i'm not going to be having babies so he agreed and but i said you know if if life happens and we get pregnant we get pregnant you know i'm I, i'm okay with that but let's you know we can prevent it you know so we were responsible humans but as soon as we got married everybody was like when are you having kids like we're not having kids we've been married for since 2007 people still ask us they still my mother still lives in hope that we will have children like no um his mother's his brother um their only child is turning 18. It's like, no, no more grandkids. No one's having any more kids. They're too expensive, guys. Um, mm, Henry Golden, yes, please. Oh, the guy in Shogun. Get his brand endorsement. <laughs> Grace, right all day long. So in my family, um, 
my my twin sister and I were the only two siblings from the same parents and then I have two half sisters above me and then I have two adopted sisters below me um so I always figured I just adopt kids if I wanted kids but truth be told life is just we like our fur babies to be honest we just the responsibility of having a child is just more than I can take so I'm like no <laughs> um everybody out there there are parents and i know there's a few in this chat uh you guys are amazing i can't do it <laughs> can't not cannot i'm not a teacher i don't do kids i don't you know no my sister teaches high schoolers i look at her all the time like how do you do this through children she goes i know <laughs> don't tell that to a high schooler though they don't think they're children so anyway, we've been chatting for uh, literally two hours, so I'm going to, I would rather, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, guys, I'm so sorry, but my pain meds are kicking in, I'm regretting, yeah, I have to go say goodbye to you guys, it's, it's nine o'clock, I have got to go to bed, I am very tired, I'm gonna go catch Jacob, I'm gonna go take a nap, well, I'm gonna go sleep, and um, I'll s I'll, I might go live late tomorrow. Don't hold me to it. Um, and that's it. Thank you for hanging out with me. There was a lot of options today. So hit the thumbs up if you haven't. Thank you for just chilling. And we'll do it again. Have a good Easter if I don't see you before, you know, then. And uh, we will see you on Monday for sure. Have a great weekend. Bye, everybody. Have a good Friday. <laughs> uh, thanks, Morella. Thanks for hanging out for your first live. That's so cool. Come back. You know, we I go live on Mondays and Fridays. Except for this Friday because I'm traveling. But normally, normally in a perfect world, uh, I'm ending the live stream or I'll just keep on talking.